Okay, very good morning. It is 6.45 a.m. on Tuesday the 2nd of March. Hope you're doing well. Just going to give you a quick update on what's happened overnight in terms of the close on Wall Street. uh, Some meaningful news coming out of China overnight where their domestic market underperformed uh, on fears of policy tightening and some focus on their property market as well as the, the broader global view that the Chinese have at the moment about the general frothiness of the market with this whole yield inspired move that we saw dominating market attention over the last week or so. Uh, and then just going across the charts and having a look at things, there's some definitely interesting levels uh, in the currency FX pairs, precious metals, gold getting very close to that $1,700 level. Uh, so it has recovered a little bit through the latter part of the Asia session, but generally downside pressure still emanating from the firmer dollar at the moment. The Dixie this morning is still trading up, um, albeit moderately, only around two tenths of 1%. But as I'll show you in a moment, I think on a dollar index perspective, we are looking um, like potentially technically on the upside, some room to move further north, which could insert further um, downward pressure on the major pairs. Otherwise, as you can see here in the cross asset class mix, um, equity index futures are a touch lower, but that does come in context of yesterday in uh, the cash markets in the US. You know, after such a nervous end of last week, we had equities under pressure from accelerating yields. Actually, um, we saw yields just hold quite a bit more steady in, in comparative terms from what we were seeing last week, and that generally alleviated uh, some of the tension. And just having a look here, this is the US 10 year yield. And as you can see, it's currently trading at 1.42. And so after we jumped up um, last week considerably, we have have now paused at around what is the bottom end of that range of yield consolidation that we saw roughly through the second half of 2019 and beginning of 2020 before yields obviously plummeted on the onset of the pandemic. And so I do think this is quite a meaningful area now for US 10-year yields. I do think it's kind of a bit make or break for this week. And obviously some of the data catalysts could well come to the forefront uh, because we've got the other ISM figure coming out later this week, got ADP tomorrow, non-farms on Friday. So these all could be meaningful things to spark some price movement. But at the moment, it feels like we've just hit a bit of a, a decision point, which is, is this... Um, fair for pricing in reflective of things like the growth prospects improving, the vaccination um, rollout, the drop in COVID in the States, the forthcoming stimulus and so on. And so yields having rocketed higher have found their natural resting place now with a bit of upside resistance at around the bottom end of that trend uh, from where we were uh, back over that period in 2019. Or, or do we break above and do we see another quick move from around 1.4s up to 1.6s, which is up to around this kind of double top area from going back to February of 2020, um, which was around 1.63. So I think this definitely still warrants watching quite closely. Um, yesterday it was interesting because, you know, we had a really, uh, as this settled, we had a really firm close on Wall Street. Um, the S&P finished up 2.38%. And in fact, it was the biggest advance we've had in nine months for the S&P 500. Uh, the Nasdaq Composite jumped 3%. The Russell 2000 small caps was actually up 3.4%. So really strong performance there for US equity markets and did come as well with US manufacturing activity. That latest ISM number coming in in a three-year high amid a surge in new orders. But factories still do face increasing uh, higher costs for raw materials and other inputs amid labor shortages at suppliers as the pandemic drags on. So uh, that prices paid component was particularly eye-wateringly high, which would be indicative of inflation concerns. However, given the aforementioned reasons of higher costs from raw materials and, and other inputs amid labor shortages, I do think that that is a key reason of why inflationary pressures um, will be temporary of nature. Uh, because of that, that that impact of the shortages due to the pandemic. So markets looked beyond that and actually took the data for what it was and actually that initiated some of the positive reaction that we saw generally in equity markets uh, yesterday. So kind of yield calmness with that data point uh, helped lift things. However, as we go into the overnight session, 
things have soured a little bit and that has led to some dollar um, strength generally speaking uh, and this is a look at the dollar index on that longer term trend line we've um, been kind of jostling with over the last couple of weeks either above or below generally has been quite indicative of dollar movement um, for the intraday session and one of the things I was looking at yesterday to start the week off was around this 91 level which if I put the crosshair here and you can see the dotted line and if I just zoom it in actually make it a bit more clear to see um, so kind of around 91 would it be about here uh, which was capsulating some of these peaks of price activity we've had over the course of the last two and a half or so months and you can see we're just breaking a little bit above there at the moment and so it does bring into question you know do we push up to the year-to-date highs which would be a little bit further extension of dollar strength up to around 91.59 from 91.18 that we're trading at the moment so at the moment i do feel a little bit more bullish about the dollar uh, given this technical setup and if we're looking at the major pairs I do think it does warrant watching quite closely and if I just bring this euro chart into play here um, this is the kind of areas that I'd be looking at in today's session uh, this 120 30 level in euro futures was quite key we broke underneath there with some of that prevailing dollar strength in the overnight Asia pack session and you can see we dropped quite quickly uh, that level is significant over the course of the last month's worth of price action you can see here it was a support area on the 8th the 17th and a couple of times in yesterday's session so the breakdown of that that support has now turned resistance for this price recovery initially just going into the early hours of european trade so worth keeping an eye on there on the daily it does look interesting now actually because around this level is quite technically key uh, as you can see it kind of brings in as well that peak of price activity that we saw back on the first of SEP so I think it does mean that if that dollar does push on the euro does look a little bit susceptible here to downside 120 psychologically not far off and then you would be looking to target really around this 119.60 and a half kind of area which then starts to bring in uh, some of these price points here that we had uh, previously as resistance in the summer of last year so definitely feeling a little bit more downside bias for, for the major dollar currency pairs, all things remaining equal for the time being. Uh, Euro looks a little bit more compelling technically. Cable at the moment, I'm just eyeing um, any further push to the downside around this 138.63 level. Uh, that was previous resistance going back to the beginning of February. And so if we do push, push back down, we'll be keeping an eye there and any move through there, you've got the S2 and then be looking down at the low that we have on the 18th and 17th as potential areas to have a look at. Um, looking at, you know, pound in a, in a slightly higher time frame, um, you know, this is looking kind of stretched out. And what I wanted to kind of encapsulate here was really this range that we were trading uh, through the back end of January. So key areas here, I think, are if, if we do continue to reverse course, um, would be down towards those areas I just mentioned, but then a further deeper pullback through 138, which would be quite a key kind of zone area around 37.50 to 138. Um, is this really to do with sterling? No, not really. It's nothing to do with the budget. It's nothing to do with the ongoing UK rollout. It's all to do with dollar at the moment. So I'd definitely be looking for dollar to dictate proceedings today as well. Uh, and as I said, um, upside potential for dollar was going to put some downside pressure on these pairs. Similarly, so if we're just looking at gold, the precious metals definitely uh, being weighed upon by some of this recent um, dollar strength. And this is just looking at um, Friday session. We had Monday's recovery came up for a nice technical test on the pullback right to the kind of scene of the crime for the support and breakdown of price we had on Friday. As we now uh, kind of look to recover slightly after that initial Asia pack low at 1704, what's interesting here is that we are seemingly continuing to th thrash out new lows targeting the $1,700 level uh, in gold. Now on the pullback higher, 
I'd be looking then for the prior price action on this breakdown of prices as, as areas of resistance. So you can see we've tested and just seeing a little move above it now, which is that previous lows here on, on the breakdown of price. As we move higher, now it does open up uh, potential recovery up to around 25 and a half, uh, which would be these highs here. And then above there, next resistance would be seen around 31 with 32 being the daily pivot with the broader recovery move up at 54. Not so sure we could get up there today. Um, but looking on the daily, this is what does look interesting because and, and does make gold seem quite susceptible at the moment to potential downside kind of headwinds is we had and you can see the the rationale behind on the daily the, the breakdown in price that we had quite quickly in the overnight Asia pack session that's because we've been holding relatively nicely at around that 1717 breakdown there saw quite a quick flash lower to um, 04 as I said and we've recovered back to the spot now of that previous era on the daily of the low prints of those sessions that being as well around the lows that we had in mid-June so definitely keeping an eye here um, 1700 definitely a psychological target and I'd say around this kind of band of 84 to 92 captures then the kind of range high and low of this period of consolidation that we were seeing after gold was initially pushing up as the pandemic took hold at the beginning of last year and that price consolidation we had of Q2 of 2020. So definitely again, it's a dollar story there uh, that I'd be looking at to dictate what the gold direction generally would be. Uh, and then similarly, uh, oil markets being weighed upon uh, a touch. I don't really think it's too much OPEC play in this. Um, obviously we are expecting around one and a half, 1.6 million of the supply cut to be watered down um, the Saudis taking back their million and perhaps another 500,000 put back online by the OPEC plus group um, so I don't think that really comes as too much of a surprise if anything I think with the situation with oil we kind of rallied so far so quick um, it doesn't really make me feel particularly uncomfortable with the scope of the pullback at the moment albeit it has accumulated now to around three dollars in size um, we found a fairly nice resting spot now at around the $60 handle, which does bring in, you can see these kind of areas here that we were trading back in DEC of 2019 and then the beginning of, of last year. And so perhaps then we, we find a bit of a floor to price at the moment. Any further deeper pullback, be looking for the next kind of area uh, of support down around 58, um, 40, 45 uh, would be something I'd be looking at. All right, well, a couple of headline stories. As I said, we had a positive close on Wall Street as a general summary. Uh, in fact, particularly strong in the equity space. Um, I wouldn't get overly obsessed with that, though, because it does come on the coattails of general weakness seen at the end of last week. And then overnight in Asia, things did turn a little sour, given the fact that China came out with some interesting comments. Um, they basically said that they're very worried about bubbles in overseas financial markets. That was according to their China Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission chairman, um, who also added that they're worried about risks in China's property sector. This has led to some growing speculation as what did weigh on their local equity market just a week and a half ago or so, uh, which is that of policy tightening away from this very accommodative general stance that the central bank has held in line with most other global central banks. And that then causing a little bit of nervousness in, in local trade and just generally dragging down the region. Um, so things have, are a little bit um, more negative than perhaps where we finished on Wall Street on the back of that. Um, I don't really think that that reverberates too much directly into the European Open. It's very much a China narrative, um, but perhaps then a slightly weaker hand to lead on into the European Open. Um, overnight, we did have the RBA interest rate decision. They kept their cash rate steady uh, and their yield target on their three-year 0.1% and the QE program at 100 billion. They did reiterate their yield kind of target strategy and said that they would buy more bonds if needed. Um, in fact, despite that commitment, um, yields in Australia actually rose. So it was more of a hawkish type reaction by price movement uh, on the back of that. Now, I think the rationale behind this, I mean, it's not definitive, but my take would be that um, actually, 
Uh, this is a bit of a disappointment because just looking at my notes, if you remember yesterday, the RBA doubled down on its bond purchases to start the week after what we had last week in terms of the yield acceleration that was seen globally. Um, so if you think about it, then we did see the biggest drop in Australian yields in about a year um, going into Monday session. So today to see a mild move higher on the back of generally then uh, and as expected in line agreement, I think is, is, is nothing to get too caught up in. Uh, just more for market positioning reaction, I'd say. The other thing then from a news perspective, the Senate, so the latest update here is they'll start debating Joe Biden's 1.9 trillion stimulus program as soon as this week, according to the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. It could potentially, according to other senators, be as early as tomorrow, Wednesday. Um, at the moment, the Democrats then have backed down from their effort to raise the minimum wage to $15 uh, as part of that uh, kind of olive branch to get these talks ongoing. Uh, the oil market, as I mentioned, um, oil prices is sitting around 60 bucks at the moment. It is down around 72 cents. Um, in the near-term price action, uh, just, just some short-term resistance being encountered here in the early European entrance at 60.22 does encapsulate some of the area of support that we're seeing going into the, around the close of Wall Street uh, or US trade last night. So perhaps a, a band until the US session really commences at 60.22 uh, and from the age of pack low at 59.45 for the time being. Uh, again, as I've already commented on OPEC, um, one thing to be aware of is that um, the joint technical committee gathering starts today ahead of the OPEC meeting then that takes place on Thursday. So this is when they all get together, looking at stats more to then really define the decision making they might make two days later. But given the fact that those meetings are taking place, I would probably expect then an increase in tweets and rumors and hearsay and those types of things. So people like Amina Baker, um, definitely worth following on Twitter. I did share her handle on my own Twitter account yesterday. If you're not following her already, I strongly suggest you do so for any energy traders. And then looking at the session ahead, um, what have we got? Um, so yeah, German retail sales numbers, nothing to get too excited about, uh, not really a focal point for their economy. So then very much so looking to later in the morning, we get the flash CPI data coming out. So this is kind of HACP for the Eurozone and inflation definitely a key to, to watch for a lot of these central banks with the view of the impending inflation spike, albeit most would see it as, as temporary. And the reason for that is energy is expected to be a big component driving headline inflation higher in the coming months, given that oil chart I showed you and the pretty quick acceleration we've seen in oil prices over the last couple of weeks. Um, the ECB probably going to insist that temporary increases do not constitute um, something more sustained in regard to its goal um, of, around the inflation target. So again, um, although this number might have upside potential both today or in the coming weeks, I don't really think it's particularly going to be something which um, is going to be that meaningful overall um, for, for price reaction. I guess the way I'd look at that data is anything on the softer side with a generally firmer dollar setup could then take out those lower levels in euro. Then it gets quite interesting for that directional trade um, for on the back of dollar, dollar strength. Um, then in the US session, it's pretty quiet. You've got Fed's Brainard discussing the economic outlook um, and then Fed's Daily. Both are voters and they speak at 6 and 7 p.m. each respectively. You've also got the ISM New York Index at 2.45, so shortly over the, after the cash open um, this afternoon in the US. Um, and that is it. So that's your briefing for this morning. I'll share some of these technical charts I've marked up into the um, Amplify Live Discord room. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it. Um, plenty more comment coming uh, for sure in the future. Otherwise, have a good day ahead, guys. Thanks very much.